bull or bear. I'm rolling my 2014 hubcap. Ooh. Help that one out a little bit. She comes up a bull. Good morning, folks. What's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Yeah, I'm still alive. I uh, got the uh, live Lauderdale by the Sea cam up here, and uh, what a beautiful sky out there. Uh, been hot as heck, though. We've been having like a, uh, a 80s and 90s and 100 plus degree heat index the whole nine yards, but uh, uh, still great to live in Florida. And, uh, you know, not bad, not bad overall. It beats uh, freezing your ass off during the winter. Well, uh, I'm bringing back this quote. My quote last year was the quote of the year. I said I was going to retire it after a year, but you know what? It's, <laughs> it's so fitting for what's going on, and actually it's very uh, fitting for what I discuss here um, in, my, uh, uh, in my videos is about thinking for yourself and uh, questioning authority. It just doesn't apply to uh, government's media and uh, other things. It applies to everything in your life, including, uh, uh, you know, who you listen to, and uh, that includes me as well. Always question me. Well, anyways, where was I for the last week? Um, I shouldn't say always question me, but uh, always question authority on any subject, you know. Uh, otherwise, you'll never learn. And uh, anybody that's in authority in a position of knowing things uh, shouldn't be afraid to be challenged, okay? Uh, all right, no less. Where was I for the last uh, week or last week? I was pretty much, I think it was Wednesday through uh, Saturday. I was at the Florida United Numismatist Show. Uh, I think this is the 68th uh, Fun Show Convention. I was uh, inside, I don't know, somewhere right around here, somewhere uh, up the front corner. Uh, and again, I was there from Wednesday to Friday. A lot of you coin guys out there ask me to tell you what's hot and what's not. Well. Uh, that, that whole uh, uh, PCGS and NGC old holder market, now for you non-numismatic guys, as soon as you see me flip to the next page, you may want to just fast forward this uh, through this, but uh, for you guys that collect coins out there and are uh, uh, numismatic folks, uh, coin nerds like me, uh, <laughs> um, the, the, the holder market is just crazy. The first generation holders, those old PCGS rattlers, I think they've leveled off a little bit or are going to soon. For a lot of the common stuff, but the uh, the more rare stuff in holders. Again, we're not talking about rare coins. We're talking about the holders themselves. PCGS, you know, the early generation, first generation PCGS certified holders, uh, and some of the uh, uh, more rare and uh, less uh, uh, produced NGC holders, like the white labels and the coveted black labels. Um, and some of you that are even coin nerds are probably shaking your head. What's Brian talking about? Well, there's a whole collector market now in just collecting holders, all right? I thought it was kind of going to be a flash in the pan, uh, and it still may be a flash in the pan kind of thing. It's tough to say. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But it's kind of a subset or sub-collectible of the coin market because these guys are buying what they consider rare coin holders irrespective of what the coin is inside them. And to give you kind of a clue what's rare and what's not, especially when it comes to the old PCGS rattler holders and uh, some of those older holders, is uh, imagine certifying a coin that didn't really need to be certified or not many people would have certified. Common coins, uh, circulated, believe it or not, a circulated uh, uh, Jefferson nickel, uh, you know, common date Jefferson nickel or a circulated uh, uh, three cent piece or something crazy like that or a 20 cent piece uh, uh, or some earlier gold that would have been circulated that people wouldn't have sent in to be grading because grading was expensive. Since very few of those items were ever sent in, there's a low population report on these holders. Not because the coins are rare, just because the coin holders that they're in are rare. Now I hope that makes sense doesn't make much sense to me, but it is what it is. Uh, and some of that stuff is bringing big money. The more esoteric the coin, the uh, uh, like $20 gold pieces. Uh, I think a gentleman uh, emailed me. And by the way, I got your email. And uh, I believe we got back to you. I hope uh, you got my email back. I know we had a little back and forth there. Uh, but the $20 gold pieces, some of you out there have those old rattlers in the 20s, $20 gold pieces. Believe it or not, those are probably the more common types. Uh, pound for pound, and I'm not saying that the, uh, 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 again, a Cirque Jefferson nickel or a Cirque uh, Buffalo nickel was going to bring uh, m more money than a $20 gold piece in an old rattler. Percentage-wise, to what the reality of what the coin is, it's going to bring a lot more money, okay? So the 20s are really fairly common, as are 10s and 5s and some other, and silver dollars are fairly common to some degree. 
Uh, but uh, uh, it is, as of right now, still a real market. There's guys out there running around that floor uh, paying big premiums for that stuff. What else is hot in the numismatic market? Um, same old stuff. Fresh deals are hot, so any uh, cool coin deals out there, uh, uh, fresh coin deals are, are really hot out there. Uh, I just, uh, one of my customers out there uh, uh, just brought in a, a great collection for uh, us to sell at the show. Uh, so that was, uh, we were pretty busy with that at the show as well, uh, getting some good activity on that. And I suspect we're going to be getting some good sales on that at some point too. Uh, but to get past me, 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 uh, the show in general was busy as hell. Lots of public traffic in there. I was really impressed with it. Lots of money changing hands. Uh, not a lot of bullion sales. I was surprised I didn't do a lot of bullion sales. It was really all rare coin sales primarily. And people were just eating up anything new or any fresh deals that were available out there. Um, besides the plastic holder market, the uh, uh, 20s and US gold wasn't real hot, but early gold, uh, early type coins are still hot. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, commems are still not hot. US commems, unless they got super nice toning, tone stuff is hot. But you know, this is not really a coin video, uh, so let me move into precious metals. And a lot of guys have already fast forwarded through here, so <laughs> let's take a look at metal prices this morning and uh, what we got going on. Uh, about the same as yesterday, hovering about the same. Platinum down just a tiny bit at 460, uh, but uh, I think platinum has been a tell for a little while now when it's made some uh, big moves to the upside or decent moves to the downside. Uh, when the other two metals have done just the opposite, I have found the other two metals have followed platinum. Maybe it's just a weird coincidence, but uh, again, I've seen platinum as kind of a tell uh, before either markets have moved up or down. Uh, and if you've been watching my videos, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Gold currently at 19, 1978.17 uh, and silver at 25.22, holding on to that $25 level pretty good. We've got a little Ted Butler article I want to talk to you about here in a moment. Uh, high of 1980, a low of 1973, so we're kind of range bound right there. But silver, again, holding on to that $25 mark pretty nicely as of right now. Again, we're going to get into uh, what's going to happen to silver here, possibly uh, with the Ted Butler article that came out on the 15th. Uh, and you can read it for free, actually. It's an article he published, and I'll show you how to read that in a little bit. But uh, platinum, again, sub $1,000. Um, remember, same old nonsense in the silver and, and probably platinum markets. Of, uh, just uh, 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 it, It's not a, a true supply and demand market. But let's move past that again. That's just a, a topic I'm so tired of talking about. And for you new folks that have been uh, just kind of tuned into me or haven't watched my videos before, you, you're you probably asking yourself, why own gold and silver? And some of you old, older folks out there that have been watching me for a while too, got to be a little disappointed when you're thinking like, wow, gold hasn't really gone up dramatically or silver hasn't gone, gone up dramatically. Uh, but I'm going to challenge that thought. I'm going to tell you that, well, dramatically, that's, that's a matter of opinion and uh, perception. But uh, uh, gold and silver has done quite well. Uh, even in these periods, we, we felt it's kind of, well, mostly gold, I should say. Uh, silver is uh, holding its own at these low, stupid levels, but I think silver, again, artificially way lower than it should be. So why do you own gold and silver? Well, the simplest thing I can point to, folks, and uh, again, uh, dollar, the U.S. dollar index now. I'm going to look at the dollar index uh, of all time. What does the dollar index have to do with the price of gold? Well, we'll get into that chart next, and you probably see it up here anyway. Uh, but I don't know why they go, don't go before 90, but you can see that the dollar has had its highs, its lows, okay? And uh, look at my cursor right here. This is what the dollar is doing overall, all right? You got that choppy movement uh, 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 up and down a little bit, up and down. But if you were to stretch this out over the long term since 1913, this is what you'd have. You'd have a chart that was just choppy in motion with a lot of ups and downs. Uh, in our lifetime, in a couple of lifetimes before us. So if you had a, a lifetime chart of the U.S. dollar since 1913 when the Fed kind of took that thing over, your chart would look like this except more of a steeper angle downward. Meanwhile, what does gold chart look like in that same period uh, from 1913 and above, especially since Nixon took off the window? Uh, and we'll just use from 1970 and above primarily. This is what the gold chart has looked like uh, from the uh, 70s uh, till now. And you can probably say even before then, but much more tepid uh, uh, charts before that. I shouldn't say tepid, but flat line charts. But this is what gold's done right here. A lot of choppy up and down motion, but overall gold is still, you know, gold started in the hundreds, 200. What you have seen here, folks, is just you haven't seen the price of gold and silver 
climbed dramatically because of supply and demand issues. And remember, there's really not much supply issues with gold. I've got to separate silver out a little bit. There's big supply issues with silver. Uh, but gold, there's plenty of gold out there. But gold is used by central banks. Gold is coveted by central banks. Gold is coveted by the elite, the billionaires out there. Don't let them tell you they're not. Just think about what central bankers hold in their vaults and what a lot of countries hold in their vaults. And we're going to get into that as well. And again, I'm giving you reasons why you need to own gold and silver. Because while this chart is going down over history, again, that choppy movement down, uh, down to, uh, I guess, the base, which would be zero at some point, uh, gold and silver continues to climb. Uh, another chart that I can't seem to make heads or sense of is the Fed balance sheet versus gold price. So if you, some of you guys want to comment, please make some comments out here. But uh, you would suspect with the huge, all right, uh, the, blue, the blue line represents the Fed, and the gold is uh, obviously the orange line. Here's your first 2008 financial collapse. You can see the Fed's balance sheet shot up dramatically, almost 200% at that point. But boy, we are way beyond that. Prior to that, you can see the price of gold going up, and that's since 2005. Again, look at this. It's almost like hmm, gold was kind of uh, 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 recognizing what was going on. I don't know. I don't know how to explain that, but gold was making big moves even prior, uh, and that probably has a lot to do with, uh, 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 I don't know. Well, it's not anything to do with the Fed. Uh, it has to do with the decline in the buying power of the dollar, I'm sorry, uh, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, you know. Uh, this thing right here, uh, purchasing power of the consumer dollar in the U.S. city. By the way, believe it or not, I got that set to one year. That's a one-year chart, folks. That's pretty dismal. Uh, that's that that is going <laughs> that's going to hell pretty damn fast. But uh, uh, the 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 balance sheet's a whole different thing. It has nothing to do with the CPI right here, more or less. The CPI is the buying power of your U.S. dollar. But you would think that it would have a direct impact, the balance sheet would have a dir direct impact on the amount of dollars floating around there and the amount of inflation, but, uh, or, or in the price of gold going up dramatically. But take a look at this. Kind of about the same here. You see gold and, and uh, the Fed chart are kind of going up in hand, but all of a sudden right there, 2013, things digress there dramatically. Um, now, is this because of manipulation in the gold markets? Now, we know the silver markets are manipulation. I manipulated uh, frequently, uh, but I don't know. Uh, but take a look. Clear separation in these two lines. Fed balance sheet starts to climb dramatically up to about, what, 500 percent? Wow. Uh, but then backs off here. But gold, through that whole period, very tepid, not much going on until 2020 when the, when the balance sheet of the Fed just explodes right to the upside. You can see it's coming down here. But, folks, you can examine these uh, things yourself. My, my thing is just take a look at why is gold and silver going up and why it's going to continue to go up. Um, look at the dollar index. Just look at that over a period of time. Look at the uh, uh, Fed balance sheet versus the gold price. Take a look at the consumer price index. And again, the ones, and take a look at this as well if you want, which is called the uh, United States Misery Index. These are why gold and silver are never going to go down in buying power, okay, versus the dollar, you know, it's a little wonky, but uh, buying power. Think about the buying power of a silver quarter in 1964, all right, and we'd have to go back to uh, who, 1964, there you go, Johnson, all right. Think about the buying power of a U.S. silver quarter in 1964 when the U.S. government made backed money in silver and gold, okay, and uh, uh, it wasn't that bad, 6.44 in the misery index. So it's doing much worse now. Uh, but, and this is during the Vietnam period right here, uh, but right before Nixon took over the shit show. Uh, but uh, um, a silver quarter at, during this period in 1964 would buy you a gallon of gasoline, all right? If you had taken that same quarter and it wasn't made out of silver, hold on, if you just took that same quarter and you went to the bank, they wouldn't give you any silver for it. You know, if you went to a local store, they'd give you just a quarter for it. It's still worth a quarter in U.S. dollar buying power. But what is that silver in that silver quarter worth? It's worth about four bucks or so, folks. Think about that. It's still maintaining its level with inflation or at least with the price of fuel. A silver quarter back in 64 during this period right here would still buy you a gallon of gasoline. All right, would buy you a gallon of gasoline. The dollar value of that quarter, not the silver. The silver value didn't have much value at the time. It's not as much as the dollar value, perhaps. Um, uh, but the uh, uh, it would buy you a quarter would buy you a gallon of gas. That same silver quarter, not the quarter itself, will still today again buy you a gallon of gas. So silver 
uh, precisely has kept up with the price of inflation. And I think silver is extremely undervalued for so many different reasons. So uh, uh, these are the reasons you want to own gold and silver, and that's <laughs> just my opinion. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the BRICS currency project and the BRICS nations. And uh, give me one second, let me get a sip of coffee here. Um, hmm. And what the BRICS uh, is going to do to the price of gold. You know, I have mixed feelings on, you know, the impact on BRICS on the price of gold. Because remember, folks, these are still central bankers. They may not be uh, a Federal Reserve people. They may not be uh, Western U.S. bank system or the European bankers, uh, per se. But they're still bankers, all right? They're still looking out for their own. I highly doubt that the BRICS nations that you see right here uh, Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, and uh, oh man, who is the last one? I should know that. Uh, I was going to say Saudi Arabia, but <laughs> one of your BRICS, uh, the BRICS nations, uh, th there's no way that these nations are going to back their currencies, their people's currencies in gold, and and and, and allow citizens, I just don't believe this, and allow citizens to uh, uh, exchange their their paper rubles or their paper uh, rupees in India uh, or uh, their Brazil, uh, uh, whatever they use, I'm sorry, I should know that, um, uh, for gold. I don't think citizens are going to be able to walk into a bank and exchange their notes for gold. I think the type of gold backing you're going to be looking at in the BRICS nation is going to be the backing like we had prior to Nixon taking us off the gold window, all right? Uh, U.S. citizens and the citizens, I mean, citizens of the BRICS nations will not be able to exchange for gold. However, it, it, it'll be security, it'll be uh, uh, um, collateral uh, for that country to trade with other nations. But again, I don't think it's going to have any impact on the citizens able to buy or sell gold. In fact, I believe that, it, you know, uh, big central banks and the BRICS nations at some point will have a reason to uh, blow up the price of gold because it makes their you know, it, it increases their wealth overall, but uh, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of game playing going to be played with uh, uh, the gold prices with these nations as well. Uh, what else is going on out there? Nothing too good. Uh, I'm going to probably get into the Ted Butler article here real quick uh, uh, and uh, talk about silver, where that's going. Um, you know, meanwhile, meanwhile, Burisma. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does nothing. All right, uh, I'm going to try to keep, stick to uh, uh, stick to the uh, what I can do best here, which is gold, silver, and platinum. Uh, by the way, premiums on gold, silver, and platinum are super cheap still right now. Uh, I'm really surprised. Price of silver is up dramatically. I thought that uh, uh, we would get a uh, a big burst in uh, retail purchasing of silver, but kind of tepid right now. It really is tepid. I think a lot of seasoned silver buyers that are still have enough money to pull the trigger. Uh, or kind of waiting to see where this market heads. Is she going to tank at 25 or is she going to do another 4 or $5 reversal? Um, well, that's tough to say. And now let's just get into that right now rather than uh, uh, look at this sad crap right here and these sad people right here, sad clowns. Um, hmm. Yeah, right. Well, anyways, uh, uh, here, let me move along here. Um, oh, hey, before I do. Uh, good article, um, and again, you know, you can question the source, and of course, we all should always question the source, the question authority, and uh, uh, think for yourself. Uh, but I did see this on RT, uh, and, uh, and we've talked about this sometime as well, is the uh, 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 weaponizing the U.S. dollar system. And I've been, I talked about this well before even a lot of the a lot of people talked about this, okay? But weaponizing the U.S. dollar system, uh, and that's exactly what we've done. And we spooked, this is why you got bricks forming their own deal here. The worst mistake we ever made was weaponizing the dollar system. Worst mistake we did. Uh, because uh, really, we stepped on our own wee-wee there, that's for sure. But that's not uncommon in Washington, D.C. with the morons running the show, now, especially the morons that are running the show now. Always been morons there. Uh, roughly half of Russia's $640 billion in, of gold and Forex assets held abroad were frozen by Western central banks. And I'm kind of curious. When they say frozen, is this confiscated for good now? Uh, that's a question mark. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think Western nations are going to say that we have outright stole it, but kind of looking like where it's going. Uh, but again, let's move into the impact that has on other nations. This is why BRICS is forming. When they saw BRICS, is, especially China and these other nations, saying, holy crap, 
the Western nations, the United States, the dollar system just stole all of Russia's, or not Russia, but a good part of Russia's gold and forex exchange. Just stole it, outright took it. Um, we're getting out of this system, and can you blame them? Uh, an increasing number of countries are bringing home their bullion reserves in the wake of unprecedented sanctions imposed by the West on Russia. Reuters reported on Monday citing an Invesco sur survey of central bank and sovereign wealth funds. According to the report, widespread losses for sovereign money managers resulted from last year's financial market route made them fundamentally rethink their strategies amid fear of higher inflations and further geopolitical tensions. The survey showed that over 85% of the, you know, you're not going to read this in uh, Bloomberg, you're not going to read this in Wall Street Journal. You know why, folks? Because they get paid by the, their corporate sponsors to blow smoke up your ass, all right? Um, and again, I'm sure that, you know, you get some blow, uh, smoke blown up your ass by this, but uh, again, you're not going to read it here because it's uh, critical of uh, our system here, and, and it should be. Uh, the survey showed that over 85 percent of 85 sovereign wealth funds and 57 central banks believe that inflation will now be higher in the coming decade than the last. A substantial share of central banks were reportedly concerned by the precedent set by uh, sanctions on Russia, including 60 percent respondents said it made gold more attractive. It's a good thing for us, folks. 68%, and why shouldn't they? You know what I mean? But uh, again, they want to keep you in fiat. Why they're the uh, same thing that the BRICS nations are going to do. They're going to keep their people in paper. Why they back their shit in gold, all right? Their trades in gold, you know, cover their asses. 68% uh, were keeping reserves at home compared to 50% in 2020. And again, you can't blame them. Uh, I like this quote, if it's my gold and I want it in my country, has been the mantra we've seen in the last year, according or so, according to Invesco's head of uh, official institutions, uh, who oversaw the report, confirming Ringrode's recessment, one central bank told Reuters Anonymous, we did have it uh, held in London, but now we transferred it to London, too. There's the biggest crooks in, in the world when it comes to uh, 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 commodity exchanges and uh, financial uh, corruption uh, besides the COMEX in the U.S. Uh, but again, I, I digress. Uh, now we transfer back to our own country, hold it as a safe asset, and keep it. That's why you own gold, folks. You, you know, at one time you could trust the United States to hold your gold for you, but uh, <clears throat> I said one time, didn't I? Uh, and, 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 and you could never trust the, the uh, British system. I'm sorry. UK has been, uh, it fell way before the U.S. empire did. Uh, nearly half of Russia's $640 billion worth of gold and forex reserves were frozen. Uh, let's replace that with stolen because they ain't been returned yet, and are they going to be? I don't know. Uh, induced, uh, included numerous rounds of sanctions over the conflict. Moscow has condemned the plan of freezing its assets, stealing. Uh, described the West plan, I think they're being optimistic that they're froze, but I think they've been stolen. Stolen. Uh, described the West plan to expropriate these funds as theft and a warning of retaliatory measures. There you go, the word use of the word theft, and that's exactly what it was. The Ibesco study showed that geopolitical concerns combined with opportunities of emerging, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Get out of that, good article, um, and uh, again, you're not going to read this in any mainstream U.S. or European reporting. Why? Well, because it tells you the truth. And sometimes even our enemies throw the truth at us because they know it hurts. <laughs> hurts more. Uh, Ted Butler, Code Red in Silver Futures. You can read this for free on GATA.org. Uh, I highly recommend you do. Um, let me just kind of get over some things here uh, real quickly. Again, you can read this article for free. This is a subscribe site, but Fred Hedge, uh, I mean Fred, Ted put it out there uh, about a week ago for public consumption, so I'm going to just share a few things in that article that you can read for free. Uh, one would think I'd be ecstatic about the higher move in silver o over the past three days since it appeared to behave. Now, this is last week, folks, when we've seen it move up to the $25 range where we're kind of sitting today still. Uh, as I've been expecting, lamely erupting higher out of nowhere. Uh, and I'm going to kind of move along here. And he says it's true that he was gratified to see silver surge in price. And he thought, well, maybe this could be the big one. But um, he believes that there's some major big stuff going on there. And he says it right here. I'm trying not hard to be alarmist, but what I see alarms the heck out of me to the point that I believe we are at the most critical juncture in COMEX silver since the peak of prices back in 1980 when all sorts of emergency measures were enacted to deal with the Hunt brothers that are debated this day 43 years later. Now this is pretty heavy when Ted Butler starts pointing this out. This article's about a week old now, not quite a week, hold on, 16, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I forgot what today's date is, 19, no, it's four days old, so I mean, uh, we got Friday coming up here, let's see what happens. Uh, and Ted says, I recognize that what I postulate today may turn out to be completely wrong, and I like that he does that because it's very, you know, a lot of times, you know, you can't 
underestimate or overestimate these crooks in the com comics markets. You know, with the amount of money they have, they can do whatever they want. Usually, uh, again, it's always going to be to their own benefit. But uh, sometimes it's hard to read uh, their chess moves a couple, you know, well, maybe not. <laughs> uh, I postulate may turn out to be completely wrong, pre uh, personally embarrassing, but my reading of the data strongly suggests the likelihood of a disorderly market dead ahead in comic silver futures. Again, this is a couple days old, folks, in which I urge the regulators to take immediate emergency measures. Um, and that's pretty heavy stuff. Again, I encourage you to read this article. You can read it for free I'll to, on GATA.org. I'll go back to that link for you. Um, and uh, he's not clear whether the disorderly market conditions he sees dead ahead will result in a sharp sell-off as much as four or five dollars. Uh, and again, this is interesting, folks. Uh, a sharp sell-off right now would put us back into that $20 range, $20, $21 range, or an explosion on the order of $10, $20 or more, uh, uh, or both following a sell-off. Uh, but anyway, there's some really heavy stuff out here. Ted Butler calls code red emergency uh, in the comics markets uh, after running through all the data here. Um, again, it's an article that I want you guys to read yourselves because I'd be sitting here for about 20 minutes going over everything. And uh, uh, here, one second, let me kind of get to the bottom and see what I'm talking about. It is a long article, but it's worthy of a good read, folks. And uh, here we go. Um, Trading in silver and comics and shares and other things. There's some big stuff going on out there. I'm not trying to be cagey describing in a manner where no one appear to be correct. I'm motivated. Uh, first, the changes are related to the pronounced ongoing physical silver shortage. Okay, that's what he's talking about here. Uh, starting with the new shortage report on securities. Um, folks, again, I'm going to really please encourage you to read this article because I think Ted Butler is exactly right. I think we're going to see either a huge move to the upside or a, a sizable move, huge move to the downside potentially based on the data that he's looking at, what's going on with the shortages out there. Uh, more, uh, 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 pardon the language, but fuckery going on in the comics, crimex markets uh, with the silver markets right now. Um, and a lot of confusing things. I'm really uh, curious to see what happens this Friday. Do we maintain to this $25 level? And more importantly, Monday, do we maintain this $25 level or are we going to see a big move uh, to the upside or down? Side. And I believe Ted's normally right on this. Um, again, uh, very technical and long article. I wanted to start reading some of it to you, but I know we'd be here forever. Please go to uh, GATA.org, type in Ted Butler, Code Red, and Silver Futures. Uh, and actually, I think all what they're going to do is they're going to take you to silverseek.com, and you can find it there. Uh, Code Red by Ted Butler, July 16, 2023. Read it. Please do. Uh, I think we're going to see some big moves to the upside. Uh, or again, downside as Ted talks about right here. All right, folks, that's it. I'm going to roll out of here. I got a lot to do. I'm glad I got a video done. Uh, and again, at some point in my life, I'll try to get back to some real consistency on a daily basis with these. Thanks for following through with me. Hey, if you don't happen to catch me uh, on this particular social media uh, 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 video channel, you can catch me on this social media channel. And probably the reason you wouldn't catch me in any other one is, well, the reason you find a lot of people get booted. <laughs> you can also catch me. Listen. Uh, it's hard for me to take phone calls here, right? But if you're on this particular format, I believe it's a great free speech format, which is uh, uh, Twitter. Uh, please find me out there. There's my name. There's my uh, uh, tag at Brian Kuzmar, Brian Kuzmar. Uh, and ask me questions out here as well in the, com in the comment section, and I'll try to get to them. Oh, that's what I didn't do today. Didn't answer the comment section. Uh, I'll try to do that uh, tomorrow, folks, or my next video here. Uh, I knew I first forget something. I'd uh, like to acknowledge everyone that watches my videos. I really appreciate it. And as I said, if you're looking to buy gold, silver, platinum, and you live in South Florida, we have a brick and mortar. We're open 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays. We'll beat the locals. We'll beat Atmex, SD, and J, and Bullion. Uh, and if you live outside my area and outside my region and you can't find a good local dealer that's competitive with those guys, give me a call and I'll see what I can do for you. We really don't do much in smaller quantities, but if you're looking to buy a large quantity, maybe I can help you. Uh, that's it, folks. Brian Kuzma with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Signing out. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.